Hi, I'm Kevin from Going Batty. I wanted to take a minute and just uh, invite you to be a part of the next several minutes as we take a look at Mary and Joseph, their relationship, and how uh, the birth of Jesus played out in what could have been a really drama-filled situation. This is the second section of Matthew. It's the first Matthew chapter 1, and it goes uh, right after the genealogy. So I hope you'll check it out with us. It's going to be really good. Stay tuned. The next part of Matthew that we're going to look at is we're going to look at Mary and Joseph and their wedding, their engagement. And it's a little bit controversial because you've got an unwed mother who gets pregnant and then goes around and tells everybody that it was uh, immaculate conception, that she's going to be a virgin birth. Well, the truth is, is that a lot of people didn't believe her and uh, Joseph being a man of character, he made the decision that he was going to divorce her quietly because he wanted to show her honor and didn't want her to get any more embarrassed than maybe she already was. But then something amazing happened. An angel shows up. An angel shows up and tells Joseph everything he needs to know about the coming birth of his son. He tells him to call him Jesus, which is uh, a Greek form of Joshua. And um, from that moment, uh, Joseph knew that he had to, he had to obey God's commands and follow what God was asking him to do. He was asking him to be the father, this little baby that was coming to the planet to show us how to live and then it eventually would die for us and for all of our sins. Here's something else for you, us to keep in mind. As we look at the life of Joseph, we need to understand that he comes from Jesus' family tree. He comes from the line of David. He's connected to King David, Abraham, Noah, Adam, and Eve. And we need to remember that because it really plays out in the story about how Jesus really uh, was a part of everything that God lined up through history. One of the things I love about this story is, is that neither one of them truly missed the gift of Christmas. Now I know we're well into January and we're way past the Christmas season, but I think we've got something to learn about the character of these two amazing people. Men, we can look to Joseph to be a man of honor, to be a man of character who knows how to treat a lady, who knows how to treat the mother of his coming child. We also can see him as a godly man, a godly man that knew how to listen to the voice of God. And when the big voice comes, the voice of an angel coming into his life, he knew how to be obedient and respond in the appropriate way, and respond with uh, kindness and with integrity and uh he just being obedient to what God wanted him to do. I wish I had that kind of obedience in my life. When God spoke to me, I just, I knew to do it. I'm praying that for you this week, that you'll find that integrity and character that Joseph shows his wife, the people around him that are probably criticizing his wife for being uh, uh, an unwed mother. Can you imagine the ridicule that she would have faced had he rejected her? But he didn't. He was a man of good character. You see, character oftentimes is overlooked. If we don't have character, we don't have anything. Joseph had character. Joseph had good character. And he shows that in the way that he treats his wife with honor and with respect. You got to plant seeds. You got to plant seeds in your heart that will grow. And as you think about your character and you think about how to develop it, you got to use stories like Mary and Joseph and, and their potential wedding uh, to uh, grow you and help you think through things that you thought you knew or that you thought you didn't know. How would you react to someone that came up to you and said, listen, I'm pregnant, but I haven't had sex. It's going to be a virgin birth. That would blow your mind. You wouldn't believe it. Most of us would look at that with cynicism, 
cynicism, and criticism because miracles like that just don't happen. But they did here. They did in this moment with Jesus and his mother. He was knit together in Mary's womb. And Joseph, because of the intervention of the angels, believed it and understood it. Mary was uh, spoken to by angels too and she she kept all of those things in her heart because she knew what an incredible and amazing journey that uh, she was about to go on. You're on a journey. You're on a journey with God and he's going to show you how to have good character and how to have an amazing life walking with him. But we have to push the boundaries of our understanding. We can't just fit things into the little convenient boxes that we fit them in. And on today of all days, we have to push aside discouragement, frustration, and disbelief. Because those things are not from God. Those are the things that would have broken down any opportunity Joseph would have had to honor his wife and to honor God and to honor the coming king that was coming as his son, his, his earthly son. Joseph was Jesus' earthly dad. I would encourage you to really think about how to let go of the negative things in your life. How do you give those off to God? How do you shed um, all of that burden off? It's not easy. It takes hope. It takes joy. It takes love. And those are actions. Those are things that we have to practice every single day. We have to practice them to our family. We have to practice them to our friends. We have to practice them to our coworkers. And here's the hardest part. We have to practice them to the people we don't like. And there's a lot of people out there that we might look at and go, they don't deserve my love. But they do. And our character is defined by whether or not will love them even at their most unlovable moment. Joseph had that opportunity and he went towards God instead of somewhere else. You know, one thing that we can learn about Joseph and his encounter with the angels is that wise counsel will lead to good decisions and it'll uh, kind of uh, circumvent all the drama. There's nothing wrong with hanging out with people that'll give you wise counsel. Hanging out with people that'll, uh, that will uh, pour into your life and help you make wise decisions. We are a culmination of the decisions that we make. We are a collaboration of good and bad choices. And isn't it good to know that we can have people around us that'll help us make those good decisions? It's so important that when we hit the rough spots in our life, we have people that will mentor us. We have people that we can look up to. People that will come around us and counsel us and give us wise counsel. Things that we need to think about that are either from God or from Scripture or from somewhere else. I would encourage you guys that if you aren't in a community of people who are loving you and surrounding you with wisdom and ideas on how to deal with things during hard times, that you get yourself into a community of people who love Jesus and are like-minded, people who believe what you believe, and, and even though there might be small differences in what you believe, there's still people that will be with you through thick and thin. It's tough to build those relationships and it's even weirder when it's forced on you. So don't make it something that's forced, make it something that's natural. And I think it starts with asking God to send someone into our lives who can show us um, that it's okay to be friends with them. It's, it's, uh, it's almost an um, open door. It may take a while, it may take years. It might take years before you find a true community of people who will love you and accept you and stand beside you through thick and thin. But if we're going to God in prayer about it and we're constantly asking for His will to be done and we're walking in lockstep with what He wants for our life, then maybe loneliness isn't the biggest problem that we have. We're walking with our Savior during weird times when we don't really know uh, what God or what we should do, but we know what God wants us to do, and He's speaking through the people around us. Or maybe He's speaking through His Word, or maybe He's speaking through the environment you're in. One thing that Rick Warren teaches in his book, Purpose Driven Life, is that we were built to be in community. We need to be in community with people. We need people around us. Uh, we long for opportunity to connect with people relationally. 
God built us that way. It's tough to deny it. And as introverted as you may or may not be, there's still a desire to even have a little bit of community, even a little bit of community. I would encourage you that if you feel like I don't need anybody or um, I'm okay being alone, then maybe God has something more for you and he wants to teach that to you. Um, Joseph and Mary, had they been in a different environment, surrounded by a different community of people, I think that whole situation would have crashed and burned. But God's divine will ordained something significant to happen. And he sent his angels to bring wise counsel to Joseph so that this situation wouldn't derail. I would encourage you that God loves you and there are a lot of great things in store for you. I don't know. I just want to make some funny faces now. And then I want to do some funny things because sometimes talking about the Bible, I get really serious and you don't get to see like me doing this. Okay? Uh. <laughs> hey, look, it's chickens down there. They're white ones. They're hiding. So what we're doing is we're building a healthy habit. We're getting in the habit of looking at God's word and seeing what it says. We're taking this opportunity to investigate what God's word has to say to us in our life. You're on the beginning of that path. You're beginning to build a healthy spiritual habit called studying the Bible. I would love for you to continue on and try other habits like hanging out with God in quiet, accountability, Bible memorization, involvement in the big body of the church, tithing with your time, talent, and treasure, and studying the Bible like you're doing here. So these are some things that I would like for you to consider making it a part of your everyday walk. Mm -hmm. Stick with me. We're going to take a look at a lot more of Matthew. Talk to you later.